Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Plateau United Methodist Church on this beautiful rainy Sunday morning. I'm glad that you're here. I hope all of us will be glad we spent part of this morning in the house of God. Remember that it may be cloudy, but above the clouds the sun is always shining, and the sun should always shine in our hearts. So welcome, especially any who may be visiting with us. I'd like to uh, just mention a, a few things. The announcements, uh, thinking of you, and the Venture Network is still collecting the luggage and the senior crew. Going to uh, the theater, that information is there. Raffle ticket from the beautiful quilt, they're there. The science center, the youth and anyone, children, be going. There's that information there. Pretty four seniors will meet at Baker's Mountain this coming Friday. Christmas play practice. The charge Pastor Parish Committee will meet on the 11th. Trunk or treat coming up. And the third first request the job. Charge conference is a week from today. And if you have any <clears throat> charge conference reports, I, I really would like to have those on the, all by the 30th, October the 1st. So much time before the end of the week. Uh, and of course, uh, tonight is a missional National Network Service is in Indonesia. I'll do a representation there. And I believe following this service, the Administrative Council will meet for, for a few minutes. Over at Weston Chapel today, it's homecoming with the Reverend uh, Jacqueline Taylor preaching. A lot going on, and of course, next, uh, next Saturday is the, the bazaar here in the pile. So. We're getting ready to enter into a very busy, busy time. If anyone has an announcement they'd like to share with us, please go right ahead. Yes. We're thinking of you for October. We'll do two people that are basically shut-ins, Dean Tron and um, Helen Proctor. Still, people are coming to be a topic and also happening in Nancy. Christ's holy name. 
Amen. Our opening hymn is in the black book, blue book, black book. Number two, number 2088, and of course on the strands. <laughs> Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts, thanking you for the rain, thanking you, O oh Lord, for the ability of getting up and coming here this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for all the many blessings that you give to us. 
And dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for our church, our church family. We thank you, O oh God, for so many things. We thank you most of all for life, for you are the giver of life. And we thank you, O oh God, for your Son, Jesus the Christ, who gives us life and who teaches us how to live and how to prepare for the hereafter. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all the many gifts that you give to us. We thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you listen to our prayer. And Father, we thank you that you tell us to bring our concerns, our burdens to you. So, Lord, we, we are doing that. You've heard names mentioned. You know what each name represented. So, Lord, we're praying for healing. Healing of all kinds. Healing, O oh Lord, of the body, of the mind, of the soul. We pray, O oh Lord, for healing of any trouble, whether it be in the home or in the workplace or wherever. We pray, O oh God, we know that you are greater than all things. All things, there's nothing that can stand against you. And we're so grateful for that. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the praises that we've heard. And we just ask that you bless each and every one. For Lord, we all need your blessings. We pray, dear Lord, for our country. We pray for those who are serving our country. We pray for those in uniform. We pray for those, whether it be a civil servant or military. And we just ask, oh God, would you watch over them and their families and protect them. We pray for all those that are not here this morning for the various reasons. If we pray, dear Lord, that you'll grant them safe travel and, and bring them safely home. Father, we could just go on and on praying. But you know what? we're thinking about, and we just give it all to you. Lord, we ask that you bless your names on the prayer list. We ask that you be with each and every one of us, those that are here and those that are not. Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray, coming together and saying that which he taught by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
many customers. You know what Fred said? Fred said it was Bob's fault. He's stealing all my customers. And the boss soon found out that Fred had. What do you think Fred did? Lied. You're right. So there goes another part of his sales. So now Fred became a liar. So the old world treasure maps changed. We've got Bob's map. Would you open up Bob's map? You can stand up and show everybody. How's Bob's map looking? Pretty good, huh? That means he had lots of good sales. Let's check Fred's. You can stand up and show everybody Fred's. Oh my gosh, look at that. The most important part coming from Old World Treasure Maps was that treasure chest right in the middle. It's gone. Nothing's left. So, how would you like to conduct yourself, whether it's at school or work? Would you rather be like Bob or like Fred? Bob, good deal. In our story today, we saw how easy it is truly to become ruined. And that means to make bad choices. Another word that you will hear, you're going to hear this word in the Bible. It's called to defy. That means to not do what God wants you to do. And you don't want to ever defy yourself. When we defy ourselves, we defile before men and God. And as Christians, we should continually strive to follow God's laws and commandments. And when we follow God, we can rest assured that our reputations are safe, that we're right with our family, and we're right with God. So everybody, let's bow our heads for one minute. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, please help these children and the big people think about the message today as they go through the weeks and months ahead. Hopefully that treasure chest will be a symbol for all of us to know that we're moving in the right direction as you have us. Amen. Amen.
Father, please accept these tithes, gifts, and offerings. In Jesus' name.
Did it take place after the disciples had been with Jesus a short time? Or did it take place after he'd been, they'd been together maybe months or years? And now they're just not getting around and they're asking him, how do we pray? How do we pray? And Jesus gives them the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> this, now, don't uh, tar and feather me, but this is, we call it the Lord's Prayer. It's in our book of worship. Every worship service, Lord's Prayer is in. Every time that we get together for, for anything, Lord's Prayer is in. But, Jesus didn't say, pray these words. This is the model prayer. In fact, over in, uh, over in Matthew 6, 19, Jesus plainly says, talking about this, the same occurrence, they ask him to pray. He says, when you pray, the seventh verse, the eleventh chapter of the second chapter, when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathens do, for they think it shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not you therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. After this manner, after this manner, Pray. Then he gives him the, the Lord's Prayer. It's a model prayer. The true Lord's Prayer is found in the 17th chapter of John. That's where theologians say the real Lord's Prayer comes from. Where Jesus prays for, he's getting ready to, for the events of the crucifixion, he prays for himself, he prays for his disciples, and then he prays for you and me. The Lord's Prayer is a model prayer. It's to teach us how to pray. Listen to, to just, just a few comments about that. He says, that when you pray, say, and this is where it comes from that we should say this every time we get together. Why it's in all the services. And maybe it's so. When you say, but I like when he says in this manner. When you pray, say, Our Father. Our Father. In the original Aramaic, Jesus used the word Abba. Not the, not the music group, but Abba. <laughs> Abba means Daddy. Simple as that. But it also goes beyond that. It means dearest father. It's an intimate term. It's a relationship. It's talking about a father and son or daughter. Dearest father. When we say, when we begin our prayers with dearest father, we're giving on a personal basis with God. We're acknowledging that he is our father. He is our creator. And we are his children. Dearest Father. In the Old Testament, the word Father is used, if I've counted it up right, about 16, 17 times. Uh, and most of the time, all the time, it's referring to the nation of Israel. But in the four Gospels, Jesus uses the term Father over 60 times. Over 60 times in the four Gospels, Jesus using the word Abba, Father, dearest Father. Think about it. We are on a first name basis with God. What did you call your father? What do you call your daddy now? Papa, father, dad. I called mine the old man one time. I didn't sit down for three days. <laughs> Dearest Father. Beautiful. Which one? Well, in heaven, of course. Then he says, Hallowed be thy name. This is called, the first part of the prayer is called the thy petition because they begin in the King James of thy. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We pray, 
And sometimes we get so centered about what's on our minds, we forget that God is in control. And when we speak to God, when we talk to God, we must say, Father, let your will be done in my life. Let your will be greater than mine. God hears every prayer, but you know the very selfish prayers, I believe, go in one year and that. Jesus is giving us the model prayer. He's saying, talk to Dad. But mention that Dad is over everything. That Dad is in control. <coughs> and it's His will, and not ours. He says, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. God's kingdom isn't here yet. His heavenly kingdom, the kingdom that Jesus is talking about, thy kingdom come, will be when Christ returns. Come, that word that means in the future. Come here. You're over there. Come here. And you're going to in the next, hopefully, future, the few seconds, you'll come to where it's supposed to go. Come here. We tell our, our pets, come here. We hope that they'll get up and come over to where we are. Thy kingdom come is acknowledging that Jesus will come back. It's going to happen. And we're mentioning that to the big man upstairs. Provide for us every day. He says he will. He'll tell us he will. So we ask for it. Give us this day our, our daily bread. Then we have to acknowledge and whenever we pray, it's always a good idea to, to pray, asking forgiveness whether we think we've done anything or not. Forgive us our sins. And then Jesus is reminding us that we should, uh, we can't really pray if there's any hatred in our heart. We can't pray if we're <coughs> mad at somebody. <coughs> Not really. Prayer should come from one place, the heart. And how can we have a loving prayer if we don't love someone, if we're, if we're angry or have hatred in our heart? So we have to ask for forgiveness first. Forgive us our sins. It also reminds us that we need God. That alone we're not too much. And then we ask for protection. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is the model prayer. In it we acknowledge who God is, the Father. The dear, sweet Father that created us is in heaven now. When we pray, we should mention something along those lines. We should ask forgiveness, and we should ask for guidance, and we should ask for help, and we should ask knowing and believing that God hears our prayers and will answer it. But we have to also mention that your will and not mine be done. The model prayer, the beautiful prayer. And I, I think it's only fitting that, that it's said in every worship service, at every gathering, at funerals and at weddings and, and other events. In our book of worship, just about every service. But it is the model prayer. Pray in this manner. Then he goes on and he tells us a few things about prayer. Jesus, of course, is talking to his disciples about events that take place back then. Which of you has a friend and at midnight and says, I need some need eat, I'm going to bring the company. We sometimes, we, we, don't, we sometimes say, well, what's the big deal here? But the guy said, oh, you know, the door shut, my children are with me in bed. In those times, it was custom. For everyone in the family to sleep in the same room. They were big rooms. But they would shut the door. They would physically bar the door. 
such as we turn on the lock today, they would borrow it. And when they borrowed it, then they would sleep. They would all sleep together. They tucked themselves in. The father and mother were usually in the middle, the children on both sides of them. So when they were in there, they were more or less tucked in for the night. Fellow didn't want to get up. He'd have to get up, he'd have to disturb his entire family. He'd have to, whatever he did to bar the door, he'd have to open it up. He didn't want to do it. Who would? This isn't just walking in the door and slipping the latch and opening it up. No, it's far more than that. And then he, he thinks about it. And one of the greatest insults of the ancient world was if someone came to see you, you didn't have anything to give Oh, that would put you on the bad list. That would be a, one of the worst insults you can give to your visitors. And that's why the fellow gets up. That's why he disturbs his family. And that's why he uh, goes to the door. Jesus is saying, keep knocking, keep talking. God will answer you. The Father will answer you one way or the other. Then he goes into the famous asking you. Asking you to see, knock on the door, we open to see you, you shall find. Prayer is something that's not to be entered into lightly. Prayer is something that takes a little planning sometimes. But maybe the truest prayers come from the heart spontaneously. If you notice, when I get ready to pray up here, I hesitate. I don't jump right into the prayer. What I am doing, and this is my little secret, when I get ready to pray up here and I shut my eyes, I say, to, I say, Dearest Father, anoint me with the Holy Spirit that I may pray to bring peace and comfort to those that need it. That's that hesitation. When we pray, Sometimes it's good for us to say, Dear Father, help me to pray. For you see, whoops. <laughs> Sometimes the words won't come. Sometimes they just, they just won't come. Something is troubling us so much that we just... We can't find the right word. We don't know how to say it. Do we not pray? No. The prayer then goes something like this. Dearest Holy Spirit, intercede for me and pray for me. Because we know that one of the, one of the duties of the Holy Spirit is intercession. To pray for us. To pray in our behalf. Holy Spirit, give me the words to pray. Help me to pray. And the Holy Spirit will. We have to be sincere when we pray. We have to not let prayer become a gimme, gimme, gimme. We have to pray reverently and humbly. And we have to be persistent. First thing Jesus says about prayer to his disciples is be persistent. Keep knocking at the door. Don't go away until you get an answer. God answers every prayer. And I believe there's three answers to every prayer. Yes. Oh, that's the one we all like. No. At least we know it. It's over and done with. The hardest one of all is that feeling we get that says not now or wait or later on. We keep praying. If you, brothers and sisters, are praying for something today, and you've been praying for a long time, keep praying until you feel in your heart and hear in your mind that you've got your answer. Keep at it. Don't worry about being put off because you won't be. God is listening. God knows what's best for you and for me and for all your children. 
Maybe the prayer is not the right time. Maybe the answer is a flat no. But don't be discouraged until you have the answer. And if the answer is no, accept it and go on. But pray. Pray earnestly and humbly. Find a quiet place if that's possible. Turn off, yes, turn off the cell phone. Or leave it in a room where you can't hear it. Get away from the television and computer and pray. Even if it's only for five minutes. Spend some quiet time with the Lord in prayer, in meditation. All of us can find five minutes during the day to do that. Disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus said, oh, when you pray, say, uh, or is Matthew writes, but when you pray, do so in this manner. And then he gives us the beautiful Lord's Prayer. Read the other Lord's Prayer in the 17th chapter of John. For that's another model on how to pray. Jesus covers all the bases. And so so are you stuck in a prayer dilemma? God is not hearing my prayer. I've been praying for this for years. You're not stuck. It's just not maybe the right time. Keep praying until you have an answer. And we have such a loving God that God will give us the answer. He won't let us keep hanging forever and ever and ever. When the time is right, He'll answer. Dearest Father who art in heaven, hallowed, holy be your name. Your kingdom will come, that your will be done. We pray from here, and we pray from here. Dear sweet Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer. And Lord, if any are struggling with prayer, if any are, are having some, some trouble in their lives and they keep asking you for help, Lord, we pray that you'll answer them quickly. But let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 381. Remember the council will meet right after the service to prove the list of officers. Let us stand in the same number three. <laughs>
created you. He'll look after all of us. He sent his son to give us grace to come to the cross. And when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to give the Holy Spirit to anybody who will accept it. Go in peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's children proclaim. Amen. Thank you.